Have you ever wondered how all those time lapses on YouTube are made? Or just wanted to try a time lapse on your own? Let me show you how I created all those time lapses. Let's go over the equipment and software I use for all my projects step by step. Of course, everything starts with the equipment. In case you want to have a look at the equipment or learn more about it, you can find the links to all the products I use in the video description. The cameras I use for most projects are Nikon D 7500 cameras. This digital SLR camera is capable of capturing images and videos in 4K resolution. For this tutorial, I combined it with a 40mm macro lens from Nikon. For the camera, you will need an SD card to store the pictures and videos. I recommend using the maximum size, which is 128GB for this camera. To keep the camera on a fixed position, I use a tripod, which makes it easy to adjust the position as needed. Since I don't want to sit next to the camera the whole time, I use an intervalometer. This device can be used to set a defined interval and take a picture after the interval ends. Besides this, I use another adapter for the camera that replaces the battery and is directly connected to the socket. Using this, you can make sure to not run out of battery. Once you have everything plugged into the camera, make sure to test if the DC adapter is working and check how to set up the intervalometer. You could already change the interval to two or three minutes. Once you have everything plugged into the camera, make sure to test if it works and get a feeling for how the camera works. To provide the plants enough light, I use a plant lamp as you can see here. The lamp uses LED and therefore doesn't even need that much energy. You can simply hang it above your setup with enough distance to the plant. For this tutorial, I grew a dwarf sunflower. It all starts with a pot, the soil, and a sunflower seed. I usually start to put the camera just in front of the setup to see the initial scene. To get the camera ready, plug in an empty SD card to be able to capture a bunch of pictures and connect the DC adapter and the intervalometer. Once everything is connected and the camera is running, you can put the camera in a good position and set the mode to manual to make sure the settings are not changing between the pictures. After that, I play around with the ISO, the shutter speed, and the aperture to get nice light and sharpness on the area where my plant is about to grow, or what I want to highlight. For my camera, I can adjust those by two little reels and combine a button with one reel. Shutter speed is adjusting the time the shutter is open and therefore how long you want to expose the photo sensor. The aperture changes how big the opening is, which lets light in. Usually, I try to set ISO as low as possible, while mostly just adjusting the shutter speed and aperture, since ISO also introduces a noise to your pictures. I will link a video with further camera settings down below. Now it's time to focus your lens on an area in the picture where you want to get sharpness. You can either manually adjust it by the reel at the lens, as you can see here, or you use the autofocus functionality of your camera. For my camera, I can tap a region on the display and the autofocus will sharpen in in that area. After setting the focus, make sure to have the manual mode active to not change the focus anymore. Now we are ready to record our time lapse. For my plant time lapses, I like to start to film how I put the seed into the soil and bury it slightly with the soil as a video before I switch to pictures every three minutes. You can either combine video and pictures or just start once you put the seed into the soil. For the time lapse, pictures make sure you set the right interval of the intervalometer. Every now and then, make sure to move the pictures from the SD card to your PC to make sure that whatever time lapse you are filming can keep running and does not run into memory issues. Once you are done taking the pictures of your project, you can move the last files to the PC. As you can see here, my sunflower is already blooming and it's time to create the time lapse. In my folder, I have all the files from each stage of the project. For all the editing, I use DaVinci Resolve, which is an awesome video editing software with great features. On their website, you can see a bunch of features like the export to different social media platforms and much more. But for now, we are interested in the download and how we create a time lapse. When you click on the download button, you can choose between the free version and the paid studio version. But the free version should be fine for the start. Once you filled in all the fields, you can download the program. After downloading, simply unzip the file installer and double click to start the installation. In between, it has to extract some files, but once it's ready, you can just click the installation process. Since I already have the tool, I skip it here and just start the program. The first step is to click on the new project button to create a new project. I will name mine Sunflower Timelapse. Down below, you can see seven different little buttons, which can be used to switch menus. For our time lapse, we just need the third, fifth, and seventh menus. Switch to the third and move all the folders with pictures down on the timeline. As you can see, the tool combines all the pictures into blocks, which can be played as a video. 
Since we want everything a bit smoother and faster, we mark all blocks and right-click them to create a new compound clip. After that, right-click again and adjust the clip speed however you like it. Doing this makes the time-lapse speed faster, as you can see when you push the play button in the middle of the screen. I already added my logo and adjusted the clips how I like them. If you want to create a smart text that shows on which day of the time-lapse the actual part of the video is, you can just add a text plus block from the toolbox menu on the left. You can either just change the text or right-click in the text field to open the expression menu. Here you can play around with the variable time, which changes with the timeline position, and use it to create a day counter. If you switch to the fifth menu down below, you can adjust the colors of the clips as you want. Most of the time I play around with the color reels on the bottom left to adjust the colors till I like them. If you are interested in details on the color adjustment, I can refer you some tutorials on YouTube. The editing is almost done and we just need some suitable music for our time lapse. My favorite site to get songs is Epidemic Sound, which I will link down below. Here you can find uncountable tracks from all genres to choose from. I already saved one that I would like to use for this project. Just download the full track or different parts of the track that you can choose from. Once downloaded, you can simply pull the track into your timeline and adjust the length. Now we are ready to render and export our time lapse. For this, we are going on the last symbol in the menu below. On the left side, you can change the resolution, format, and whatever you would like to adjust. Then just add it to the render queue and render it. Once it's done, we can look at the final video.